Okay, it says we are now live and we are getting people to join already. Trisha, you are just on it. I think you were our first one last time too. It's so great to see you. And as always, I, I'm just gonna throw this out. I'd love to see where you're coming from, where you're joining. We're in, we're in cold Utah again. We have tons of snow out here. So it's, it's well, at least, at least in, in Highland where we live, we have plenty of snow. Elaine, I see you waved. So I know that you're, I know that you're joining us soon. <laughs> so thank you. You know, Elaine and I um, had the best weekend with a number of BYU students at, um, in, in Springville Canyon. And we did a, a kind of a leadership training more or less, although I feel like I was the one learning everything from Elaine. I mean, that, that woman, I could just be mentored by her all day long and never learn enough. Um, I'm seeing a very request, but that is not from Elaine. Elaine, I know you're coming, so we'll keep going here. Anyway, it was a it was a fantastic weekend. We are in good hands with these young adults. I just want to say they we have some solid, strong, incredible young women coming up who who know the gospel of Jesus Christ very well, who are kind, confident, wonderful individuals. So thank you. Auburn, Washington, thank you. Oh yes, Elise was with us. I'm so, it was, I was so grateful that she was able to be there with us. Yeah, she, we just had a fun time with her. What a, what a great daughter you have. All right, if, if we do this as Elaine is joining us, I would like you to just, as we're starting off, just to get us going, we're talking eternal truth and we're talking the Savior's power. No, sorry, we're talking eternal truth. Sorry, I'm already jumping ahead. Oh, there you are, Elaine. I see your request. View request. Truth and Elder Eternal Truth by John C. Pingree and Divine Parenting Lessons by Elder Cordon. So as Elaine is joining us, hello Elaine, hello my friend. Oops, Hi, I just, I just knocked my phone over. Sorry guys. Okay, here we are. Am I there? Yes. You are here. I'm moving mine. I'm moving mine a little, a little backwards. I'm not sure what happened. Hi friend. Good morning. Good morning everyone. Isn't it great to, oh, somebody asked how much snow. I, you know, we don't have a ton of Highland. I don't know what you have, Elaine, but I'm probably, I guess, probably an inch over here. Oh, we've got probably about six. Really? Yeah, and it, uh, on my morning walk this morning, it was snowing the whole time. It was so beautiful. Yeah. Okay, Elaine, I'm ready to ask you a personal question. Are you ready for this? Yes, ma'am. How do you walk in the mornings in the snow. I mean, I have to get myself to the gym and I'm freezing getting out to my car. So I want your seat, like do you wear a mask? Like what, what, is, what do you do? It's so cold in the morning. No. Oh, my, my face is just, you know, it's so old and hard that nothing, <laughs> nothing hurts me. And then I wear those cleat things on my, on my running shoes when, okay. when it's really, when it's snowy. So yeah, I, I have to get out. It's just the way I am. It's so I, I, I get it. I keep I keep telling Dustin, if, if Elaine can do this, I can do this. And then I walk outside and I think, no, I, I can't do I, this. <laughs> I've got to get myself to the gym. But I have committed to being at the gym in the mornings. But the outside, Elaine, I, you, you are you are the real deal, woman. You are the real you, deal. You know what's so fun? I just this morning again. You know, you can kind of gauge the um, the time that you've walked or run. By the by, the number of times you can listen to a conference talk. That's and true. It was just a, such a beautiful morning, and then to hear those words, just all, all the teachings uh, of these two wonderful elders, it's just just fabulous. So walk with him, everyone. It'll it'll make you healthy spiritually and physically. It works. It it, it does work, Elaine. Thank you. No, thank you so much, and thanks thanks for answering that question. So the reality is, you really do just go outside and walk. Yeah. I thought there's got to be some. <laughs> There's, there's got to be some way that you are making your face warm or something. But no, you just really go out and weather the storm. You are a true pioneer. Oh, you could have handled you're the crossing cute. of the plains. You are, are cute. Well, I'll do that with all of you anytime. All right. We do need to come up with a time that we, we've had enough of you asked to be, to walk with us. But I think we really do need to come up with a time when we are going to set it on the calendar and go on a walking party with Elaine. We, we would that would that be the best? You know, I wish we could go to Guatemala or somewhere and do it, but um, we'll we'll figure this out. There's some lovely places here in Utah that we could go walk. Amen. Lita Alger, would you say that there is a an inch of snow? Lita is my neighbor. I just wanted to see if I was if I was making something up. 
I love that she says she likes to walk yeah. inside of her house. That's <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Lita. <laughs> okay. Elaine, should we get going on on this? Let's on these talks too and this, everyone this is going to be really wonderful for us and you all are already aware of this because you heard his talk but he is teaching what barbara and i have been trying to teach us and we have just got to just switch our mindset i think and and hear every issue and say well what doctrine could that could i teach that would help them understand or change their attitudes or behavior so this is going to be one of our, our our talks we'll refer to a lot i think because he just i think maybe maybe he listened to you barbara and then just wrote his talk on what you said <laughs> uh, yeah but I'm, I'm confident that he's probably listening to elder bednar or president nelson or president oaks i you know we get it from the leaders of the church and he's doing an, an incredible job doing that as well I, I happen to know that one of the assignments that Elder Pingree has is over the correlation department of the church. Okay. And so where he is talking so much about truth and doctrine and things of that nature, he is well grounded and well versed in, in what the church would like us, what leaders of the church would like us focusing on as far as understanding truth and teaching it correctly. So yeah, it's well, great. Barb, so for everyone who's just barely tuned in, we're going to do the talk Eternal Truth by Elder John C. Pingree. And then we're going to do, um, which, what's it called, Barbara? Oh, the, no. Divine Parenting yeah. Lessons by Elder yes. Cordon. Oh, if we, if we have enough time, but we want to focus really here on this one. Don't, don't you think for a, a little bit here? I do, Elaine. And I, the, the reality is Elder Cordon is talking so much about, about parenting and intentional parenting. And he talks about doctrine. And if we can get this down, if we, if we can get Elder Pingree's talk down even better, it'll help us to do what Elder Cordon is asking us to do. So I think, put the emphasis on Elder Pingree, recognizing that that is exactly what Elder Cordon, one of the things that Elder Cordon is strongly asking us to do is understand the truth so that we can better teach it to our children intentionally. And not just our children, our nephews and nieces, our grandchildren, our students, our neighbors, our calling, every, so we can better teach human beings right so yeah yeah with a specific emphasis on our own children but but so that we can teach all right let's do this elaine okay hey um i'm ready to, begin? to yeah. start yeah okay. i i because i love i when he says this so i'm starting for those and also we feel kind of feel like we need to jump back a little bit for those of you who need to know this and we'll be redoing it with the next general conference which we can't wait for if you want to go to my Instagram, which you're on Instagram page. And then one of those highlights, you find the general conference talks and they're all numbered. So just a reminder, if some, a few of you have asked, where are we getting these numbers from? They're on those little highlight bubbles on that Instagram. You can click on it and then it'll say general conference. Um, it's just a free PDF download. It's just to help us all so that we can be on the same page. So that's why this is numbered. So thank you for going back. That's so great. I think the, the just to, just to start us off here, I think paragraph nine, uh, he says at the very last sentence of that paragraph, he says, our need to recognize truth has never been more important. I think that's the bottom line for me. Yep. Amen. And, and Elaine, I'm going to jump us back to one, the number eight before that paragraph number eight. Because I love the story. I mean, this, this, he, he explains this so well. And I think that this is so often what we do. He tells the story of his son and how his son was memorizing these names. And he says to the, the so, so for the, for the review, Elder Pingree and his wife were called as mission leaders. His son is trying to memorize the names of all the missionaries. He's nine years old. And Elder Pingree recognizes and hears them, him saying this. And he says, what are you doing? Let's, let's make sure we refer to them as elder and sister. And then his son's response is, Dad, I thought we were supposed to memorize their names. And then here's also that principle that I think is so critical, Elaine. It ties into exactly what you're saying. Our son what, did what he thought was right based on his understanding. And, and that's, I think, one of the critical points of this. I do believe many parents, many leaders, many members of the church with the best of intentions teach false doctrine or with the best of intentions are not quite in line with the brethren. And it's not, it's not because they're trying to be. It's because it's, 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 it takes extra work, as he says here. It takes extra work to be grounded doctrinally. So I'm just going to give you one personal experience from my life, Elaine, that just 
I was just reminded of when I started teaching seminary full time, I remember receiving uh, a blessing. It wasn't a setting apart blessing because it was a, it was a, my employment, but it was a blessing just from my father. And in the blessing and, and, you know, my, my dad was pretty good with, with doctrine and things. And he said in the blessing, the Lord is pleased that you have studied your scriptures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there are some things that you may consider doctrine that need correcting. Wow. And then he just said, pay close attention to the scriptures and the prophets so that you will be able to understand where you may have gone off a little bit so that you will not be teaching that to your students in the future. I appreciate that, that so much because I thought, and I, I mean, I always know that I don't know everything. I mean, that, I think that's obvious, but as a religion teacher, as a seminary teacher, in this case, when I was first starting, it was a great reminder that with my best of intentions and having studied the scriptures as well as I could and trying to teach and prepare, there were some things that I had been taught and that I had kind of soaked in over the years that were not quite correct, that were just a little bit off. And some of those things I've learned over the years and I've been able to say, oh my goodness, I, I thought that that was, I thought that was true. And it's been nice to be able to go back and just have that reminder. And I keep that reminder with me often that even with the best of intentions, even with, I'm, I, if I'm studying, we never, we, we, we are never free to think that we know everything. It's the prophets, seers, and late revelators of the gospel of the, of the Lord's church that are the ones who define doctrine and teach, us, and teach doctrine. And we then understand it and teach it to other people. We learn for ourselves from the scriptures and things, but we need to be careful to be aligned completely with them. So for me, I just loved this understanding that with the best of intentions, this young nine-year-old boy did what he could with his understanding. Yeah. But to your point in number nine, Elaine, the volume of sources of this information are proliferating our need to recognize truth has never been more important we need to be in a sense humble enough to say what i thought i knew all of my life was not quite right not quite right that's been my experience with learning about the priesthood for example the priesthood power of women i there are some things that i have thought that were 100 percent correct and then i started to realize as i studied to listen to prophets i didn't quite understand everything women really do have priesthood power and authority and i didn't necessarily recognize that before but with the teachings of the prophets the scriptures and the holy ghost i understand it better now than i ever have before so we can we are continually continually learning elaine and that's maybe started off with with that discussion amongst us that we all have i have a lot to learn still about the fundamental doctrine of the gospel of jesus christ I I think we, Barb, yeah. whoa, if you're saying that, then we're, we, we're going to run hard, not walk anymore, but run hard to catch up with you. You're amazing. But I do have to say somewhere in the scriptures, I don't know where this is, maybe someone will, that it says that at a certain point we'll be ever learning, but never coming to a knowledge of the, the truth. That's Second and Timothy, I, just so you know. There it is. Not, not, okay, it's one of my all-time favorite scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and, and I think, oh, I just think so, it's so important for us as women to, to know the doctrine. And, and Elder Pingree goes through, you know, he, he reinforces what we've been teaching. And, uh, there are just a few fundamental doctrines um, that we can, we can use. And then there are lots of principles that, that help us apply those, those and doctrines when use our agency. So, so Wait, let's just review. Just... Okay. Hmm? Sorry, no, sorry, go. I, I'm just going to give the reference. I'm so sorry oh, to interrupt you. It's Second, it's good, Second good. Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. It's one of my all-time favorite scriptures. Do you think it so thank you. applies to us today? I mean, 100%. We have, we have so many resources to learn so much. I mean, we just, it's, it's such a blessing. And yet we do need to recognize eternal truth. And he... He defines eternal truth. God is the source in, in, in paragraph 17 of eternal truth. He and his son, Jesus Christ, have a perfect understanding of truth and always act in harmony with true principles and laws. This power allows them to create and govern worlds, as well as to love, guide, and nurture each one of us perfectly. They want us to understand and apply truth so we can enjoy the blessings they do. They may impart truth in person or more typically through messengers such as the Holy Ghost, angels, and living prophets. And, and I, I think that's why Barb and I started this was because we just got a push, didn't we, oh. Barb? 
Uh, yes, to very help, strong. To help all of us to gather together as women and walk closely with our Savior Jesus Christ and strengthen our faith and testimony and our ability to recognize eternal truth and then help others to deal with issues that that based on that doctrine that's why i'm in, i'm doing this this morning that's why I, I wake up every monday excited elaine i i cannot agree with you more and and to the individual who just said maybe i shouldn't say anything no i, I i'm not gonna i'm not gonna tell you what to say and what not to say but i am gonna tell you this the holy ghost literally is a conveyor of truth and the Holy Ghost will only confirm truth if it is true. And I, I hope, and this is serious for all of us as teachers, as parents, but there is one thing that I have learned is if I am teaching my children, if I'm teaching my BYU students, if I'm teaching a class at Relief Society, if I'm teaching my BYU, it doesn't matter where I am, if I'm teaching and I say something that is doctrinally not correct, I feel it. I, I, I have learned to recognize it. And to, the, to that individual who I completely understand what you're saying here, I strongly recommend that you pray and ask Heavenly Father to help you to know if what you are saying is true and to confirm the truth to you. Because one of the things I've learned is in teaching, the Holy Ghost will bring things to your mind and the, and the Holy Ghost will teach you truth. There have been times when I didn't know something and as I'm speaking, the Holy Ghost has taught me truth and confirmed the truth in the moment. So don't, Satan would have us, it's, it's another one of my all-time favorite scriptures is, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, right? So don't think I'm afraid now I'm not going to teach truth. No, nothing could be further from the truth. What we do is we study harder. We are more grounded in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We teach what we believe is true. And then we ask the Heavenly Father to help us and to have the Holy Ghost testify truth to us so that what we are saying, so that the speaker and the hearer again, another scripture, are both edified, right? Section 88, so that we are edified when, when, when we have all had a chance to speak, that we are edified together. The Holy Ghost, and this is something I teach my students, if I ever say something that you do not believe is true or that the Holy Ghost is not confirming, please, please let me know. Whether it's in front of the entire class or to me personally, I, I would rather be corrected than teach false doctrine. So please, at any time, and most of the time, I, there have been times when I've been speaking in class that I was about ready to say something and the Holy Ghost was just simply, are you Very sure true. that's right? Are you sure? <laughs> like, or don't go there, Barb, because you're about ready to teach something that is not true. And I take note of that, I write it down. Like, I need to make sure that what I'm saying here is true because sometimes it comes down to simple nuances, right? Yeah. Again, and, and even on this, on this Instagram, Elaine, I think both of us would happily say, we're doing our best to teach the truth as purely as we possibly can using the teachings of the prophets, the scriptures, and the Holy Ghost, and our own experiences and things. But, but we are not the prophets. <laughs> we, we are here to convey and here to be a part of the discussion as we've been asked to speak up and speak out by our prophet. That's true. And, and, and uh, I'll give a reference to you to read Second Nephi um, hmm, chapter th or 32. Or, yeah, 32. I'll have to find it. Any Anyway, it tells you right there that the Holy Ghost will tell you. And then it says that the scriptures will show you. I'll find yep. that and then, then give it to you. Maybe somebody else has got it quicker. I'm, I'm reading a clean copy of scriptures, and so it's really kind of tricky for me at times. Elaine, I think you are referring to Second Nephi, where you're talking about angels speak by the power of the Holy yes. Ghost. Is that when you find about wherefore they Second speak Nephi. the words of Christ? Yeah. yeah. So you're in Second oh, Nephi, just so you know, chapter 32. Yeah. Verses one That's through seven, three, one through six, three and four actually, yeah. and and there's, I I I'm going to do this in these scriptures too, but I just put a big square around that and said, boy, talk about assured success. That's a principle of assured success. If you have scriptures telling you what to do, and then the Holy Ghost also telling you what to do, you're you're in business. That's that's assured success. So I think it's really critical, Barb, just to stress this, and I want to stress it again, that we are worthy to have the companionship of the Holy Ghost. But we go to our, our sacrament meetings, that we partake of the sacrament, that we repent every day. I think, I think Elder Pingree said that's what he does. 
Absolutely. Yep. Never before has that been more important either to stay. And we're, we're living in a world that, that, as it says, that thou mayest more fully keep thyself unspotted from the world. You go to your house, the house of sacraments, and, and really it, it's getting so that no matter how hard we try, there are things that splash on us that, that we need to, we just need to be pure. So we have that help. Elaine, I, I agree. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about priesthood just for a second more because, you know, Elaine, one of the things, well, for, uh, two things, Elaine, first of all, I love, you're talking about virtue and purity. Uh, he talks about pure truth, but purity is an individual. Elaine, I love that Elaine, and she's emphasized this with me and our, our students recently, which I just love. It's, it's a return to virtue. Right. And I and that's what repent is a return to virtue. We are virtuous people and we are returning to virtue. If, yeah. Right. I mean, is that absolutely. Absolutely. We ha we're we're here to gain that experience. We're here to make choices. And then we find out, oh, I made the wrong choice. So we return. OK. And then to, to, for for another part on this, Elaine, which I, I love this kind of connection here is. I, I've heard recently some who are concerned that we teach if you sin that you lose the Holy Ghost. It's a pendulum, right? And I think we know this, and, and that's part of truth. The, the closer we are to God, the more we are able to recognize Him. The more we know Him, the more we recognize the truth. It's light cleaveth unto light. It's, it's virtue cleaveth unto virtue. So the more we, the more, the more virtuous we are, the more we will recognize light and feel truth. And we will also recognize and know what is not right and what is not true. The further we go away from virtue, the further we are from living a life like God, the less likely we are to understand, recognize, and know truth. I, I would say that is, we, we talk about other people and how you, you get some of the darkness, you don't rep recognize truth. It's, it's true in my life. I know in my life, if I'm not staying close to God, and it's just nuances, it's just those little things that we can do. The further away I am from holiness, the further away I am from returning to virtue, the less likely I am to soak in absolute truth or to recognize the nuances of truth. So again, this is this I hope nobody's feeling like you aren't you aren't able to do this. Everyone is. Regardless of where we are, we can recognize truth according to where we are able to have truth. And Elder Pingree talks about this in this talk. We'll find this here in a second. But the key I, is I, I just to build found that relationship. It. Oh please, oh. Elaine, please. And no, you've got to keep talking, but, but you're, you're teaching truth right now. And this is in paragraph 20. He says, uh, finally, you and I play a crucial role in this process. God expects us to seek, recognize, and act on truth. Our ability to receive and apply truth is dependent on the strength of our relationship with the Father and the Son, our responsiveness to the influence of the Holy Ghost, and our alignment with Latter-day Prophets. Yeah, that, it is, that is so, so good. And, and I, I love that relationship that he's talking about. So in my in number 13, God reveals eternal truth to us through a network of revelatory relationships, right? I mean, back to this relationship um, involving himself, Christ, the Holy Ghost, Prophets, and us. Let us discuss the distinct yet interconnected roles each participant plays in this process. And then Elaine, to your point, I'm having that on number 14, Elaine. I'm not sure if we have oh, the same number here. Got, mine's, mine are numbered differently. I'm sorry. That's okay. I've got, I've got it's just, okay. just today. <laughs> sorry, we must have done something here. But, but to your point, that's number 14. God is the source of eternal truth. He and his son, Jesus Christ, have a perfect understanding of truth and always act in harmony with true principles and laws. That, that, that doesn't ever change. So to your point, they want us to understand and apply the truth. And then, and then number two, so we have, we have the Father. And then second, number 15, the Holy Ghost testifies of all truth. And that's the beauty of knowing as parents and as leaders. That's, that's the responsibility I will put on, on my students, especially the ones that are a little bit more mature. If the Holy Ghost does not testify of the truth, don't blame anybody else. You have to take responsibility for understanding truth yourself. So go to the Lord. If you are feeling that this is unsettling, take it to the Lord and see if it's true. I have been taught many unsettling things in my life by wonderful people who had the best of intentions, but that doesn't mean it's true. I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. And, and I love this is from President, President Oaks often teaches this. He's taught this a number of times. 
when we try to answer the question of why when God has not answered the question of why. So for example, why have women not been ordained to a priesthood office? We will get answers similar to this. And I'm sure many of you have heard this an answer such as because women are supposed to have children and or why don't we talk about heavenly mother because God is trying to keep her sacred. These are answers that are made up by people. These have not come from the prophet. This is not quoted by the first presidency in Quorum of the Twelve. So if we're giving those answers to people, we're adding to the confusion. The Holy Ghost does not confirm that is true because the prophets have never taught that. So that, that's strong. And I know there are probably many of us, including myself, who may have said that or taught that in some way. It's the same thing with blacks in the priesthood. The Lord has not revealed the answer. So we have to say, the answer is, as President Hinckley said when asked, why do women not, why are women not ordained to a priesthood office? His answer is, I do not know. That's the answer. All the other answers that we give are not doctrinally sound and they are not according to the Holy Ghost, God and his prophets. So we just, I'm just throwing this out. We have to be so careful before we just give answers that we've heard repeated over and over again. That may be scary for some people, but I, I just, I, I'm asking, honestly, and <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting on my soapbox again here, Elaine. I'm just asking, be very, very wise when, we are able, when we're talking that we really do understand what we are preaching, especially when we're giving the answers to why. The explanations are often not given by the Lord, but they're man-made. Such great advice, Barb. And, and I've been in Barb's presence when she's been asked some hard questions and she'll say, well, the truth of the matter is, I don't know. And then she'll say, because it's not in the scriptures, it hasn't been taught by prophets, seers, and revelators. And Elder Pingree actually covers this piece, this piece of it in his talk under the heading, Trusting God When Truth Is Not Yet Revealed. Excellent. But, but yeah, we, Elaine, let's go there. We, we do have a lot of things that we, we was, we've learned when we were really young that we just keep passing along. But, but now that we have this measure, doctrine, principles, and applications, we can, we can see that a lot of that was not truth and that we need to ground ourselves, as you say, in the eternal truths that do not change. Yeah, and, and Elaine, I, <clears throat> for those of us, maybe if we're getting intimidated by that, it's just a strong request as the prophet has asked us to go back to the scriptures and go back to the teachings of the prophets and just make just do our best it doesn't it doesn't mean that we're not allowed to open our mouths anymore that's not that's not what we're saying it is just simply do all we can to make sure that we are in line with as he talks about here in that relationship and i, I call it triangulation but it's that relationship with with god jesus christ the prophets and the spirit I, elaine when you're talking trusting god when truth is not yet revealed that's my number 23 i know our, our pages are a little bit off okay so good. To, okay Okay. Elaine, do you want to, do you want to read that? Do, what do you think? Well, I, I, I think it's so good. Those next few paragraphs. He just says, so, so what should we do when we sincerely seek for truth, not yet revealed? And, and that, that, that's a huge statement right there because we're still, we're still, we're a church that believes in revelation. And this morning as I was taught as walking uh, with him, I just thought, I am so grateful that I believe in a church that believes in continuing revelation through prophets, seers, and revelators. Because, uh, and then you know, he made the distinction about practicing and policies and how those are adjusted from time to time yep. to align to more closely align to the Lord's will, but just to keep order in the church. But then he goes on and he says, "I have empathy for those of us." who yearn for answers that do not seem to come. And you've mentioned several of yeah. them, Barb. Yeah. To Joseph Smith, the Lord counseled, hold your peace until I shall see fit to make all things known concerning the matter. So there's, there, there's one. There are lots of things we still don't know. And then to Emma, he said, murmur not because of the things which thou hast not seen, uh, for they are with withheld from thee and from the world which is wisdom in me in a time to come so there again and then he and then he says personally i too have sought for answers to heartfelt questions many answers have come some have not 
as we hold on, trusting God's wisdom and love, keeping his commandments, and relying on what we do know, he'll, he helps us find peace until he reveals the truth of all things. I, as we hold on, we cannot we cannot again Barb and I feel so strongly about the power that it that we have access to as women right now we cannot get sidetracked we must hold on the, the prophets are pleading a plea to my sisters is what President Nelson said we need you we, we need your wisdom we need you to be able to teach the bedrock do doctrine of Christ we're we're preparing together right now. It's it's really quite a wonderful thing. Elaine, I don't have my list right now, but I have done many a uh, talk and research on how often in the last 10 years, prophets, seers, and revelators have asked the women of the church to understand the doctrine and to teach it. I, I don't think that there's ever been a time when the prophets have asked the women to understand and teach doctrine and, and correct principles any more than today. I, I could do a study. I mean, I'm happy to do a study with my students and just see if they can help me figure out those numbers. I'm confident in all of my yeah. studies of reading these and things. I'm confident that today, the last 10 years wins, hands down. You, you think of Elder Bednar. I mean, Elder, well, Elder Bednar. Yeah, I mean, his book on, on doctrines and principles and applications. You think of, of President Irene's talk in 2018, where he says to the women of the church, your primary respons your, your responsibility is to be the primary gospel instructors in your home. You think of Elder Ballard going to BYU Women's Conference and saying to them, we need women to know the doctrine so well and to teach it so well and to teach it everywhere they go, from campfires, on the social media, in their own homes and in church. You have President Nelson saying to the women of the church, I plead with you to have a bedrock understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ and his doctrines and teach it in every way you possibly can. That, that's, that's a beginning of what we have from the prophets, seers, and revelators of the church. President Oaks quotes President Nelson in saying that same thing in the 2018 General Conference. We're hearing it all the time. I mean, it is. And then we have this incredible talk by, by Elder uh, by Elder Pingree. I mean, the world is becoming, and, and you know what? He says that, he says that in this, in a little bit earlier, he says, and this is number 18, we need to remember that Satan works to keep us from truth. He knows that without truth, we cannot gain eternal life. He weaves strands of truth with worldly philosophies to confuse us and distract us from what is communicated by God. If there is a time that is more distracting for women and children and youth and young adults and men, it's today. There is so much information in the world. And one of our most important jobs, I believe, on this earth is to be grounded in the gospel of Jesus Christ and to spend our time understanding the doctrine. I, 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 there's so much more in this talk that I, that I love, but I love that he recognizes and says here, Satan's trying to keep us from understanding doctrine. In the past, we look at, we had scriptures and that's what we were studying. But today we have the internet, we have TikTok, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have all these voices and all of this noise. And it is hard to, to siphon through it all and just be able to nail the core doctrines of the gospel. But if we're focusing our time, as, as President Nelson says, this is one of the most wonderful things in the temple, Jesus Christ and his doctrine is the heart of the temple. Another reason to be at the temple is to learn the doctrine that is at the heart of what, of what Christ is teaching. So I, I, I just, I can't, I can't agree with that more and I can't agree with what the Lord is trying to teach through his, through his prophets. Elaine, can I go to understanding doctrine and policy? Oh, this please. is where we've spent a lot of time, but yes. let's, let's go yes. there for a moment. So Elaine, and mine is number 27. Okay. I'm not sure what yours Got is it. there, Got it. but so everyone knows. He says, when seeking truth, it helps to understand the difference between doctrine and policy. Now, this is something Elaine and I have talked a lot about. So we're just going to have this moment, Elaine. And if you want to please pipe in and help us understand this. So he says, doctrine refers to eternal truths, such as, and this is what we've said, the Godhead, the plan of salvation, and Jesus Christ's atoning sacrifice. So those are the fundamental eternal truths that will never change, never have changed, never will change. And then he says, policy is the application of doctrine based on current circumstances. Policy helps us administer the church in an orderly way. Number 28, while doctrine never changes, policy adjusts from time to time. The Lord works through his prophets to uphold his doctrine and to modify church policies according to the needs of his children. Unfortunately, he can 
continues, now I'm in 29, we sometimes confuse policy with doctrine. If we do not understand the difference, we risk becoming disillusioned when policies change and may even begin to question God's wisdom or the revelatory role of prophets. So then I'm just going to, I'm going to ask you this. What is, what are some policies that you have seen changed? And I can even ask you, those of you who are listening and, and participating with us now and in the future, what policies have you seen changed over the last, over your lifetime? I mean, that's, <laughs> what, what policies have you seen change that are that are significant policies? Well, you know, I can't I can't actually name all a lot of them, but I do know this that um, while I was a general young woman president, I I helped write uh, or revise two two versions of the handbook. Yeah, and there were things that changed, and the focus changed, and the emphasis changed. But uh, of late, I mean, of late, here's one right, and maybe that's really big. Uh, that that children of LGBTQ parents couldn't Absolutely. be baptized, and that 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 didn't resonate. That that was one of those where the spirit didn't ver validate that, and 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 I think courageously that was changed. And yep. wonderful blessing, what a blessing! Because you know what doctrine do we not understand? <laughs> to have to change that, so that's a big one for me. What about you, Barb? Yeah, I'm I'm looking at these answers that I'm getting from, from people coming in. We're talking age of missionaries. We're looking at, I'm just going to look at some of these because these are so good. Two-hour church. Oh, yeah. Participation in scouting. Letting the young women and young men lead their own programs. The presentation of the endowment and the understanding of the holy garment. I'm making my own wording there. Missionaries to wear white shirts all the time. The young woman not receiving her endowment if her husband was not, was not a member. Um, women and children acting as witnesses for ordinances. Adults, single adults, didn't receive their endowments until they were getting married or going on a mission. The church block, come follow me, home-centered, ministering. I, I mean, a big change, this person says, is the effort of the church in becoming a worldwide church. These are all policies. I mean, I remember, you know, my my husband, uh, bless his heart, this is one thing that he, he wasn't, he didn't start with the church, but he struggled with the policy was men that were, that were over 30 were not allowed to be temple workers if they were single. That was really hard for my husband, who was really trying to be a strong, solid temple worker and trying to get married and trying to find his wife but, and being told that he couldn't work in the temple. That was a policy that, thank goodness, has changed. We could list these policies that have changed over the years, but I'm so grateful that my husband didn't say, because of this policy, I'm leaving the church. Yeah. He understands the doctrine, the atonement of Jesus Christ, the plan of salvation, uh, the Godhead, those are, doc those are doctrinal issues that are strong, never changing, and that's where we build our foundation. I hope we aren't building our testimony and our conversion on policies that will likely change. So anytime we have a policy that's an understanding that, that's a, that, that could change, we could be, on, we could be in real, a real trouble if we think that if it changes, we leave the church. I hope we don't leave the church over I hope we, it's not leaving the church, I and mean, that sounds so strong. I hope we just don't get upset about a policy change when it's the brethren and trying to just do or do their best to help and do their best to run the church, right? I mean, these are men called of God, and these are. It doesn't mean that policies aren't important. It doesn't mean that these aren't even given to us through revelation, but it does mean that they sometimes change. But the fact that we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, who atoned for our sins and who makes it possible for us to be resurrected and to have eternal life. Now I'll base, I'll base my testimony on the Savior. I'll base my testimony on God the Father. I'll base my testimony on the Holy Ghost and recognizing that he will deliver truth to me. Those are the things that are important. But, but sometimes, and even our own, I wouldn't want to say immaturity, but even our own desire to know more, we could be, be confused by policy and doctrine, which is why I think Elaine and I are trying so hard to help us distinguish those because people do struggle and it's a real struggle i don't want to minimize the struggle it's a real struggle and sometimes some of those like you just mentioned elaine the lgbtq question things that's, that's a real struggle for people and that's something that we just with patience and great faith as it says in the doctrine and covenants continue on being rooted and grounded in the gospel of jesus christ it's true and i'll just take us all back to what we've just read in the book of mormon a lehi's dream you just stay on that path yes. and you hold on tight and you don't get distracted. And what is your focus? It is the tree, which is Jesus Christ. The fruit is his infinite atonement. That's where our focus has to be. We cannot get tripped up because we can't recognize the difference between a policy 
or a principle or a doctrine. Doctrines are eternal truths. Principles help us apply our agency so that we can act on those eternal truths, like faith. Faith in what? The Lord Jesus Christ. So the doctrine is the Godhead, and faith is a principle. So, yeah. I think we're getting there, though. I see all your answers and your comments, and I just, oh, I wish we could sit in a big class together. Of course, I guess we are, <laughs> but I'd love to see all of you. Yeah. Amen. Elaine, I, if, if I, you know, and, and Elaine and I, just, just for your purposes, for all of us listening, we talk about doctrines, principles, and applications. Or we often say doctrines, principles, applications, policies, and procedures. And you can kind of use that policies, procedures, applications. Those are changing. Doctrines do not change. Principles do not change. And principles have to be connected to doctrine, right? And with the church, you're always going to see, I, always is a, is a hard word, but as far as I know, as far as I can tell, the policies that are being are instituted in the church are connected to the doctrine for the purpose of helping save souls. But it's not, they're not eternal and they're not, they're not, I shouldn't say they never change. They never do not change. Sometimes they may not change, but most of the time they're going to change. God did not command Joseph Smith to build a boat, but he did command him to be obedient. That, that's, that's the reality. God, God does not command President Nelson to go up to the top of the mountain and receive revelation for the, for the, the Ten Commandments. But he does require him to receive revelation. I mean, those principles and doctrines are you're going to see from the beginning of time, but we're going to see policy changes. Okay. So Elaine, I and, love and Elder Hold on tight. As, as President Nelson said, take your vitamins, hold on tight, because <laughs> the world is just rapidly evolving, and, and we're going to see the Lord's hand revealed like we never have before. So stay focused on the tree, on the Savior. Stay focused on our prophets, seers, and revelators, and validate everything through the spirit and 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 scriptures amen and thank you zibbity doodah deb you're right on the money on that one you're right the, <laughs> that's exactly the, the wording there so thank you for bringing that out that's actually an important point as well with the lgbtq in the handbook and by the way hopefully this doesn't get off get it too far off if you want to hear the prophet speak about that specific lgbtq in the handbook and the change the byu uh devotional I am so sorry that I can't pull out the year right now, but it's a BYU devotional. I want to say about uh, um, fall of 2000, I don't know, fall of 2018, maybe. I'm sorry, I don't have, look. somebody can look this up for us, but it's a BYU devotional. President Nelson is talking about truth. And in that devotional, he specifically talks about that change in that policy and how that policy came about and why they made the change. It is such a great talk. And one of the things that he talks about there in truth is he says to all the BYU young adults, he, said, he just says, would you, as a prophet, would you want us to tell, tell you things that are not true so that you're comfortable? Or do you want us, and this is me summarizing it, or do you want us to tell you the truth so that you can have celestial life and have eternal joy? I would, I would, give, up, I would give up comfort today, any day, to have eternal joy in the eternities. So, Sister Max says she thinks it's September 2019. It is a fantastic oh, thank talk. you. The Marriott you. Center was packed that day. And, and frankly, you couldn't even get into the Marriott Center and sit around the outside because it was so full, they wouldn't let people in. But that is a phenomenal talk on truth. So I, I highly recommend that, that talk. Um, it may be the love laws and love the love and laws of God. I'm not sure you'd have to go to that talk. I've, I, if I had time to look that up right now, I'd find it for you. But let's go to the next one. Somebody can look that up and put it on here for us because I, I know you guys can and do if, that. And, and someday we'll learn how to post everything on this site. Which I'm sure we've got we can. a way to travel with you. You know, you know what, Elaine, if you wouldn't mind just taking it for a second, I'm going to see if I can find that talk because it is such an important talk that I want to get on there. If you need, if you ever need, the best way, I know I throw these things out to you guys all the time. If you just do byuspeeches.org, that's probably the best way if I ever mentioned a BYU devotional that I can't find. An important that, security message. Wow, I have an important security Your message. Has been locked up. Whoa. Your it looks like I may have a, a virus on here. It's not going to be very helpful. Let me see if I can. But Elaine, if you want to keep going, I can look for that. Or we can just stop for a moment while somebody's looking at it. We've got. We've got six, oh, here we go. Or... President Nelson shares five truths. Yes, yep. church news. So it's September 2019. Yep, that's yep. it. Thank you all. Good job. Yes, that yeah. is it. Such a great talk. Elaine, can I go to um, 
this part where he says, I love this, teaching eternal truth. So this, uh, so this is how to understand and teach eternal truth. I just love this. Now I'm in 30 and 31, Elaine, just so you know. So he says, first of all, in 30, we need to, if we can, to share it. And then 31, our aim is to teach truth in such a way that invites the converting power of the Holy Ghost. So one of the things that I learned, I did a lot of research on teaching and learning. And one of the things that you learn in teaching and learning and professionally or in the home is setting the correct environment. So I'm just throwing that out. Setting the correct environment makes all the difference in the world in teaching and learning truth. That's back to Elder Bednar teaching us to teach in such a way that they understand. Set the environment so they can understand. And then he says, let me share some simple invitations from the Lord and his prophets that can help. Number one, center on Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and their fundamental doctrine. Number two, stay grounded in the scriptures and the teachings of Latter-day prophets. I love that word grounded. P.S. Yeah. Number three. Are. It's so good. <laughs> Number three, rely on doctrine established through multiple authoritative witnesses. I mean, this is how we do this. I mean, this, if you want to be grounded and know that you're confident in your scriptures and in truth, this is how you do it. Number four, avoid speculation, personal opinions, or worldly ideas. And I'm just going to add, no matter how badly you want them to be true, I'm going to throw in. And, and this is, I know, controversial for many, the topic of Heavenly Mother. Let's be wise and listen to what Elder Renlund says. Number five, teach a point of doctrine within the context of related gospel truths. So make sure we keep things in context. Number six, use teaching methods that invite the influence of the Spirit. You know, I mean, Lane, I'm going to go back to the Heavenly Mother thing, and I'm not going to go on this forever, but I'm just going to say this. There, it's, it's funny as a teacher we talk a lot about Heavenly Mother in religion classes and different things. And then all of a sudden we stopped with Elder Renlund's talk as if we weren't supposed to. It's funny to me because on one side, and this is why it's so important to understand the talks and the context. On, he, on one side, he said, do not speculate. But on the other side, he didn't say, don't talk about Heavenly Mother. So sometimes we get, we get, a, we get a, a garden hose and we make it into a fire hydrant hose. He doesn't say, don't talk about Heavenly Mother anymore. He didn't ever say that. But what he did say is, don't speculate on her. So let's, let's stay on the straight and narrow path and let's just not stop talking about her. But let's also not speculate. It's just a matter of being wise and listening to what they're saying. Teach the truth about Heavenly Mother. We know that's doctrinal. He says that. But don't speculate on her. Just teach what's true. Yeah. Anyway, that, well, I hope that's obvious. But Sometimes well, we take someone, just, someone just commented something really good. She says, read the footnotes on this talk. They're oh, yeah. incredible. There are 73 yeah. of them. Yeah. The, so. the footnotes are longer than the talk. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then number seven, number five, number sorry, number five, teach a point of doctrine within the context. Number six, use teaching methods that invite the influence of the spirit. You, you, I have been in situations where I have taught truth by the wrong spirit even if it's true you do it by the wrong spirit it's not the way the lord wants it taught and it shouldn't be taught that way i have learned that lesson myself i can teach truth by the wrong spirit and it's not okay so use teaching methods that invite the influence of the spirit and then finally communicate clearly to avoid misunderstanding anyways so i i love just these seven points and guidelines the church recently i mean i don't know if i have it here or not let me see if i have um while you're, while you're finding it, Barb, let me just point everyone to Doctrine and Covenants section 50. Please. Because in section 50, the Lord asks some questions. And he asks what, we're, what we were ordained to. And, and then he answers the question to preach the gospel by my spirit, even the comforter. And it goes on. And it will describe exactly how we teach. We really are the facilitators. And guess who the teacher is? It's the Holy Ghost. So the environment is huge. Okay, back to you, Barb. Well, <clears throat> Elaine, amen. And when you say environment, if you notice on 33, he says, truth taught without love can cause feelings of judgment, discouragement, and loneliness. So if we're teaching the truth and we're doing it in a mean, authoritative way, Elder Faust has a great quote. Again, I, I know I say all these quotes, but he has a, a great quote where he actually says, if we are too dogmatic in the way we teach truth, we may be doing more harm than good, right? We may be doing more damage than we're trying to help. So be careful in not only what you teach, but in how you teach the truth. Elder Holland says it's often more important how you teach the truth than in what's actually being taught. So something to think about. Okay, so I just want to show you this. You're going to see it backwards because I don't know how to fix it. But this is called 
principles for ensuring doctrinal purity. This is the official paper that he actually quotes. So this is in his footnote. He says in February, 2023, the first presidency and quorum of the 12 apostles actually said that this is officially how you can determine these doctrinal truths. We've put this in one of those, ha those manuals, Elaine, that we did. I probably should put that on our, on one of our highlights as well. But this well, is right in there. That would be so important. I'll do that. Thank you. I, I there, are, that. there are nine points. And these are the points. I'll just read through them carefully. And he does it here. Centered on Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, and fundamental doctrine, scriptural and prophetic authority, multiple witness, avoid speculation, spiritual edification, doctrinal balance, clarity, accuracy, and non-distraction. So... Anyway, this is this is an official church document that they have come up with just in this last year by the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve on ensuring doctrinal purity. That's so I love I love, I love this document. Well, but the, the but the big key is ensuring doctrinal purity is the Holy Ghost. Really, that's just one point, but it it's so true. And and sometimes we've heard these talks one degree off. Sometimes yeah. you'll be listening to someone maybe on a podcast or whatever, and at least from in my experience the spirit will say mm, that's one degree off that's not that's not correct so so we're gonna have to be really on our toes because that's how that's how satan's working now just one degree off at the right now and we'll be how many i don't know how many off as we as we move down the road so elaine i'm gonna make a a very bold statement of that on that if i may and he, I'm trying to find, this was in the footnotes, but I am not finding it right now. Somebody could probably find this in the footnote where he's actually talking about even scholars. And, and I'm taking this as one who is a BYU religion professor and hopefully I'm very careful with this. Regardless of academic authority, true doctrine comes from prophets, seers and revelators. Some, I love, I love elder, I love, uh, Bob Millet, when he, Bob Millet was a, was my dean when I first started teaching at BYU and he was, just loved that man so much. He is very doctrinally sound. He's just a great example of that. But I remember one time him telling me, Barb, it takes, usually takes about five years to get your PhD out of you, right? His point was, always make sure that the prophet is the one who's the authoritative figure in your classroom, in your life, et cetera. You may learn a number of things from great gospel scholars, but the prophet, seer and revelator of the church is the authority of God on the earth today. And the scriptures, they go in together. So we have to be, and if somebody finds that, I would love to know, it, it's in here somewhere. It's very, well, I, when I read it, I thought, know, yeah, I totally get what he's saying here. So if you find that in here, please let us play this. I, I started, but I have so many stars on this talk. I can't I know, find the exact star. I have so much star. writing on mine too. The number 40 in the footnotes, everyone read all of his footnotes. They're huge. But if you go over, uh, if you go, go down to almost the end of footnote 40, he just says, you know, there's a lot of things we're tempted to teach, but we invite but we invite the Holy Ghost as our companion. And when we are careful to teach only true doctrine, one of the surest ways to avoid even getting near false doctrine is to choose to be simple. Uh, choose to be simple in our teaching. That's how that it, it's not rocket science. It, the gospel is for all of us. And, and I think that's really true. We overcomplicate it. We get go to all these sources to yep. validate what we're saying and it's it, this it's the holy ghost who will validate all of those things it is and elaine i found my quote oh, good. And i can't I, I cannot agree more the holy ghost is the teacher capital t e a t h e r the holy ghost i i love the warning from elder maxwell i mean i care about this stuff so much because i am a gospel instructor by profession i love elder maxwell who tells us tells us not to be a spiritual eclipse between this between the spirit and our students don't get in the way by teaching things that we shouldn't be teaching. So this is my number 22. It's when I was talking about this is he's quoting Elder Oaks. And he says, we need to be cautious as we seek God's truth and choose sources for that search. And then he says, we should not consider secular prominence or authority as qualified sources. That is such an important point. There are many, many people with a lot of education and a lot of prominence and a lot of background, whether it's social media in any way or high educational levels, whatever it is, we should not consider secular prominence or authority as qualified sources. 
then he continues, when we seek the truth about religion, we should use spiritual methods appropriate for that search, prayer, the witness of the Holy Ghost, and study of the scriptures and words of modern prophets. I, I just... Simple. I, <laughs> so simple. So simple. Okay. And I tell okay. that to myself. One. Like, I'm not the authority. <laughs> one more. Okay. One more. Just one more. Okay. His footnote note 43. He refers you to Alma 13, 23, and I would do that as well. But he says, speaking of our Heavenly Father, President Russell M. Nelson testified, he communicates simply quietly and with such stunning plainness that we cannot misunderstand him i love that amen <laughs> amen amen thank you elaine okay since we're doing this can i give you another favorite you guys can throw them in here too. But i love do you I think love we like this talk i think we like this talk <laughs> alex yeah. kingry was my state president so oh, i just like it anyway oh, i just love it i just i just love this talk Number 32, he's quoting Elder Orson F. Whitney, and I love this, where he says, knowledge is power, and all things are to be known in due season. But premature knowledge, knowing at the wrong time, is fatal both to progress and to happiness. I, I, I love that, where sometimes we are trying to teach people things that they are not ready for. Temple is a wonderful example of that. There are things that we simply cannot learn until the Lord and the Holy Ghost teaches us. And trying to force knowledge into somebody who's not ready to learn is uh, not only very difficult, but could be damning. I mean, that sounds very strong to say that, but it's so Barb, true. I have to ask you a question. Have you ever Please. been speaking in a setting where you were uh, about to teach something and you were restrained by the Spirit? Elaine, I, I will teach four classes at BYU on similarly the same topic. And one class, I feel like I can just teach them everything that I ever had learned in my heart and in my mind and use the scriptures. And then the next class, I am stopped at the door. Mm -hmm. I cannot, I'm not allowed to speak. I, I, I just, the spirit restrains me from being able to say what I want to say. And I, and I genuinely can't. So yes, and what about you, Elaine? Same, same. And I, I really believe, and it's not because of lack of preparation sometimes. It's just you're being restrained. And I, I love that because what it has taught me is how much our Father in Heaven loves His children, how much He loves you and me. And He doesn't want us to be taught something prematurely that we maybe won't understand and can't apply yeah. because he, he wants us to be successful. Yeah. And, and he knows we're on the path, and he knows we're in a different place on the path. And he is going to, as, as the scriptures say, he'll lead you by the hand. But he doesn't want you to know something that you might be held accountable for. And so, yeah, that's a really interesting experience. And I'm sure many of you have had that, too. Elaine, I can't, I can't say amen, and amen, and amen enough to that. I feel like... I don't, I don't want to jump ship because we can come right back to this. I know our time is short and people are saying thank you, and which is a Elder for me. That Cordell, I know Elder Cordon's talk is so superb. Please read and listen to his talk three or four times. He is a gem. Well, and the talk is a gem. He is. Maybe, Elaine, I can use his conclusion because I think his conclusion okay. really leads us to what we're talking about. This is Elder Cordon's conclusion on, on um, raising children. He says, this is number 20 in his conclusion. Parents, this world is full, and to our point, this world is full of philosophies, cultures, and ideas competing for our children's attention. The great and spacious building advertises its membership daily using the most current media channels. And then he quotes Moroni, but in the gift of his son, the prophet Moroni taught, hath God prepared a more excellent way. And then he says, as we partner with God through covenants and become his agents in the care of our children, he will sanctify our intentions, inspire our teachings, and temper our invitations, so our children may look to, so our children may know to what source they may look for remission of their sins. And then he says, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. So I am going to end and just testify of this, Elaine, and I'll leave it to you. I I have complete confidence that the Lord wants the women and the men of the church today to understand true doctrine and principles and to 
teach it in every way we possibly can, whether it be as grandparents, whether it be as aunts and uncles, whether it be as neighbors, Sunday school teachers, professors, religion, seminary, early morning seminary teacher, and hats off to all of you wonderful early morning seminary teachers, young women's leaders, young men's, it doesn't matter in whatever capacity that you are called or what, what responsibility you have, I testify that God wants his daughters and his sons to teach the doctrine purely and with pure intent and with love and with kindness as Jesus Christ himself would do. And I know that we have a prophet on the earth today who is receiving revelation from God to teach and to guide us and to give us the ability to have these resources available to us. We have them on our phones. We have them on our computers. We can print them off. Never has there been a possibility of true doctrine being taught across the world as there is today. I testify that God has truth, that he is the truth, that he is revealing truth. And I also testify that he is pleading through his prophet for his children to know and teach this truth as well. I also testify that as we live and understand truth, we will be more grounded in the gospel of Jesus Christ and therefore will be greater and have a stronger ability to be endowed with the priesthood power that we need as men and women to gather Israel and to bring forth the second coming of Jesus Christ. We'll have joy in this life and joy in eternities. I absolutely know that is true as we understand and live and teach true doctrine. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And I say amen. And so let's all of us this week commit ourselves to walking with him. That's the secret to everything. Stay close. And everything amen. Thing Barbara said is true. Amen. We love you all. Elena, I'm going to throw out a little, a little thing that's not a testimony, but just a reminder. We have started this Grounded podcast as well. And Elaine has been on there, as you know, and she'll continue to be on there. This, what we do on Monday mornings is our walk with him live. And then there's a podcast that's coming that's come follow me. This week is Bonnie Oscarson. She's on there and she's actually talking quite a bit about raising and teaching children true doctrine as well. So we invite you to get on there. We're going to be posting that on our Instagram account as well. Someday we're going to figure out how to separate all this stuff and make it work. But in the meantime, Elaine and I are doing all we can to get true doctrine out there as women. And so we encourage you as well to please, to please share and put things forward and, and be who the Lord wants you to be. We love you ladies and, and gentlemen and gentlemen. We love you too. <laughs> okay. We do. And you remember you are loved. Walk with him. Have yeah. a great week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye all.